Hello, uh, my name is Nicholas Rodriguez, and this is the first video in my series on the PIC32 MX250F128B. Uh, this video is just to uh, give my background and um, present why I chose this MCU. Um, so, again, my name's uh, Nick, and uh, I live in Idaho, which is a large state in the western half of the United States. It's this guy right here. Um, anytime I go out east and people ask where I'm from and I say Idaho, they always think I'm from Iowa, <laughs> uh, which which, uh, which is a great state in its own right, but um, I'm from further out west by uh, Oregon and Washington, if you're familiar with those. Um, so, okay, uh, in 2014, I graduated from the University of Idaho with a bachelor's in electrical engineering. Uh, currently, I work as a as an IC layout designer. So I take uh, schematics for microchips and I turn them into the masks that they use to uh, produce the chips. Um, but uh, going along with that is I am not a embedded software engineer or a firmware engineer of any kind. Uh, these videos are. Uh, just to educate myself, and uh, this is just kind of a hobby for me. I've I've always loved coding and messing around with these kinds of electronics, so um, I just wanted to create these videos to educate myself and maybe help anyone who's interested in uh, this particular microcontroller or you know any of Pix chips. Um, so uh, keep in mind as as uh, I'm going through these that I'm not a professional and. Uh, I might do some things that are wrong or, or just some things that are maybe not wrong but maybe not the best way to do them. Um, if you notice something that uh, you know a better way to do, please uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on uh, any of this material because like I said, I'm, I'm trying to learn this and that'd be exciting. So, um, In order to uh, create these videos, I'm I'm basically just presenting information that I've taken from the data sheet or um, from Lucio Di Jazio, I hope that's how you say his name, uh, his book, Programming 32-Bit Microcontrollers in C. I'm only a little bit of the way through this book, but man, this guy, I really like the way this guy writes, and uh, it's been a great book and a great resource for me. Okay, so why this particular microcontroller? Um, uh, when I was in college, we um, we had a, a dev board for a PIC32, so I've already I'm already a little bit familiar with them. Um, although when I was in school, I, I I got good grades in that class and I completed all the lab assignments, but truth be told, I, I never really had a a good understanding or a good grasp on on everything that I was doing. Uh, it always felt a little bit fuzzy. So in a way, this is another shot for me to revisit that material. Um, but also, uh, you know, I, I like to do projects outside of work, and oftentimes I need a microcontroller for those. Um, I think most hobbyists tend to use an Arduino, which, which, which Arduinos are great. Um, I really like, they're, they're just very easy to use, and they're easy to get your hands on, and there's a big community to help you uh, troubleshoot your problems, but they're somewhat expensive, and... Uh, and honestly, I, I wanted to uh, work more with just a single chip and kind of build the hardware around it. I wanted to get more to the nitty-gritty details behind microcontrollers. So I wanted something that wasn't pre-built for me. I wanted to have to learn how to use it and what supporting electronics I would need and just get into it as a whole. So um, that's one reason. Uh, the other reason I went for this particular one is that um, in contrast with the Arduino, it's it's very cheap. You can get these for around four dollars. So I think Arduino's you can get one for about twenty bucks these days. So you, you could get five of these for the price of one Arduino. And and one thing I've also noticed is, okay, I'm I'm a cheapskate, so I'm gonna buy one Arduino, but I might get into three projects over the course of a year. And every time I do a new project that needs a microcontroller, I'm just gonna steal the Arduino from the other one because I don't want to buy a new one. So it almost ends up killing any project I've done in the past. Whereas if I if if I had um, components that were uh, just easier to get my hands on and cheaper, 
I wouldn't mind just having a bunch of them and leaving them in my old projects so I could always just pull those out and mess around with them. Um, and then on top of that, you know, th these are just great chips. 32-bit uh, micro... 32-bit uh, architecture, I mean. Um, and they just have a ton of functionality to them. Uh, they have anything that I think a lot of even professional... Um, embedded software does engineers look for, like I2C, SPI, UART. Um, this one has USB OTG, which is amazing. I'd love to be able to connect it to my Android phone and talk between the two. Hopefully I'll look at doing something like that in the future. Um, uh, they're fast. Um, oh, and, and one key feature about this one is that it's a... I'm going for the 28-pin dip. And the reason I like that is so I can just plug it into a breadboard and I can play around with the hardware and building um, peripheral hardware and, you know, it, like it's just a lot easier than having to worry about surface mount or buying a dev board, which if I buy a dev board, I might as well just go back to an Arduino in my mind. So um, it's a dip and, uh, oh, and then also this particular model is, um, it's still an active part. So it's still in production and these will be around for some time, which is important for me because... I want there to be, uh, I want to be able to get my hands on these chips, and also if I'm going to make videos um, describing how to use them, I don't want to choose an obsolete part and then have these videos just be worthless in a year or two. So, I guess that's kind of the, I guess that's kind of the gist of what I wanted to get across in this video. Um, so yeah, uh, next video I'm going to go into uh, how to get your computer set up, and then also what hardware you need. So thanks.